all right guys hello everyone we are back and we are having a gta 3 run by english band also i forgot to introduce myself my name is tech and i'll be your host for the next few runs so ben please take it away thank you very much tech how's it how's it going by the way you know how are we doing I i'm alone so i haven't got commentators so you better not mute your microphone you're going to be with me on this oh no <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. We're you don't doing have to, great, I hope. But yeah, uh, I just want to know that you're doing all right. Yep, we're doing all right today. Yeah, good. I'm not doing all right because Death Star went 30 minutes underestimate, and I had to rush eating my second breakfast, and so now my tummy aches. So you're you're gonna have to all bear with me because this is a hard speed run, and I've got a bit of a stomach ache. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm great at this game. I promise. I am sure you will be fine. Yes. So, uh, time will start when I click uh, this little confirmation and there's a little loading screen, so I'll count you in. Three, two, one, go. And we'll get running since we're still quite a bit behind schedule. So yes, hello everyone. Welcome to, uh, not Dark Souls, but Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is um, in a bit of... Uh, a weird state right now, as you'll see in the chat, because everyone is going to talk about the definitive editions of the games. Don't worry, uh, the definitive editions are not out yet, so this is the regular uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, released 2001, you know, the good old days. And uh, if you're not familiar with the plot, basically you play as a guy called Claude Speed. Uh, you rob a bank with your girlfriend Catalina, she betrays you, shoots you in the head, but you survive. And then you're basically getting revenge on her. Uh, you start working with like the Mafia, the Yakuza, and a bunch of other places. Um, but we're not going to get into that just yet. I'll give you a few, few lore updates as we go on. So, a couple of things to mention. Uh, you notice that I'll be changing the camera a lot, especially to the top-down camera. The reason for that is because when you're in the top-down camera, it, uh, it despawns traffic on the road in front of you. And it also prevents more traffic from spawning. Um, so traffic can be very inconsistent in these games. So obviously any method to manipulate the traffic in my favor is going to be very beneficial. Um, if you're now going to say, oh, that's really annoying, can you stop? Uh, no, sorry, because it's fast and, you know, speedruns. So as you can see, that car that was in the marker there, I just despawned by doing that. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm pausing when I hit a marker. And the reason for that is because usually in GTA 3, you have to stop your car to get to a marker. Um, but if you pause the game, it sets your like forward momentum to zero, so you can just immediately hit trigger markers. And then during these next few missions, there are a couple of things that we need. One of them is a taxi, which I just got, which is fantastic. And then I'm going to go and do something that looks seemingly very weird here. I'm going to make a replay um, over that specific spot. And this is where GTA 3 gets a little complicated. So... In this game, there is a flag called the on mission variable. It can be one or zero. Uh, think of it as a light switch between on and off. And when it's off, you're in free roam mode and you can do whatever you want. You can, you know, start other missions and etc. etc. And then when it's on, you're in mission mode, which means like you can't start other missions because obviously you start like missions on top of each other, then the game won't know where you are and whatever else. So Basically, a lot of the strats uh, in GTA 3 come from manipulating that on-mission variable. So I'll kind of run you through it as we go along, but that taxi is going to be used for that later on. The other thing that we need is a gun of some kind. Uh, we can, If we don't get a taxi or a gun, it's not detrimental to the run. It's not a reset or anything, um, but it is just faster to get them on the way. So I'm going to keep a lookout for... A police officer right on cue he has a gun perfect thank you so we have both of the things we need now uh, the gun is going to be used to get a quick kill on somebody later on i'll explain more as we go um but yeah i'm gonna leave this taxi at the docks uh, and pick it up later there's a chance it might not be there by the time we get there um because in this game you can only have two personal vehicles at any one time because it's an old game uh it can only handle like so much uh you know, like assets in the memory. So you can only have two personal vehicles before the next one will despawn. So yeah, I'm gonna leave my taxi there and hopefully if all goes to plan, it'll still be there. If not, I can just grab another one later. We've got backups upon backups upon backups for GTA 3, which is good because, you know, uh, this game, 
this game requires a lot of backups because later on it gets very technical and it can be very scary to do. So another kind of, not really an exploit, but kind of an exploit, some people argue whether it's intended or not, um, is if you um, time like tapping sprint instead of holding it, then you can have like basically infinite stamina. It's not quite infinite, but it's like way longer than intended. Um, so you'll notice that I'll be sprinting around a lot more than you would expect to in a casual playthrough. So yeah. Um, this mission is fairly boring, it's just teaching you about the pain spray, which is how you get rid of the police in this game. Um, or like the main method too, but we're gonna get into the good stuff now, I promise. So, part of this in the Does that mean uh, we may have uh, time for a donation? Uh, I'll give you time in a second, Deck, because I've just done uh, some cool things. So we need to get a cop car. Uh, what you just saw there is a mega jump. Don't worry about that, I'll explain it in a second. We need to get a cop car. Um, this, this cop car has a 60% chance to be locked. This one has a 70% chance to be locked. They're both locked because of course they are. Oh, but there is a cop car here. Hello, I would like this. This is very important because A, it's fast, B, it gives me a gun, and C, I can do this. So what I just did was, that replay that I made in the first mission was over a rampage. You can use rampages to toggle the on-mission variable. And you can also use the vigilante side mission, which you just saw me turn on and off there. Um, so what I did was I started vigilante and the rampage at the same time, and then I cancelled vigilante. And what that did um, was it allows me to be on the rampage. As you can see on the top right, I have like the timer and I have a gun, which I sh shouldn't usually have at this point in the run. But I was in free roam mode, which means I can start this mission that I just started. And that may seem like really convoluted and like why on earth are you doing that? Like this mission is a driving mission, why on earth do you need a gun and whatnot? Um, but I don't need a gun for this, it's not important. But what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to do a thing called an insta pass um, for the next mission. The next mission is quite long and annoying and boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a glitch. Um, this is the start of the setup, and the end result is that as soon as we start that mission, we're going to instantly pass it and go on to the next one. Um, the way that works is quite long and convoluted in terms of like technical code monkey reasons, but basically all that you need to know is that like the offsets of the code line up in a certain way, so that when I start the mission, it's going to basically like skip right to the end of it and pass it. So I want to make another replay here. I'm on a timer. Um, I've got until the rampage timer runs out, which is 32 seconds. Um, so I may as well do anything I can for later um, while we're waiting on these timers to happen. So I made a replay over another rampage icon um, just then. And then we're going to hop into this marker, which is the end of the mission. So because we've finished the mission, we're setting the on mission flag to zero. So we're back in free run mode now. And then I'm going to start Vigilante again, which puts me in mission mode, because I'm on the Vigilante mission. But then, as you can see, the Rampage timer is about to run out. The Rampage timer runs out. I fail the Rampage, which puts me on mission zero again. And then I can start Mike Clip's last lunch with Vigilante running. And if that happens, as you can see, you just skip that entire mission. Because basically, if you start uh, Mike Clips' last lunch while Vigilante is running, which wouldn't usually poss be possible, then you insta pass Mike Clips' last lunch. So, uh, Chunky Lee Chong is the next mission. This one is what we needed the quick kill for. You can line up right here, and instead of triggering the cutscene where you fight him, uh, I missed. Never mind. We can trigger the cutscene. It's fine. I was one pixel too far to the right, and in this game, like, it's very hard to move one pixel at a time. But that's fine, the backup is just using the shotgun to kill him. He barely loses any time. But yeah, so, uh, Deck, you've got time for one donation if you want to go now. Perfect, because we got exactly one. Perfect. And we have a $10 donation from Morale saying, donating for English band to tell us a quick joke if he knows one. Please oh, I've got a perfect joke for you, Deck. You ready? Yeah. All right, I've got a great knock-knock joke for you, but you need to start. Uh, knock-knock. Who's there? Deck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm here all night, thank you. You're, you're welcome, that was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, it's been my, uh, my recent go-to dad joke recently because of the confusion that happens when you hit people with it. Because they just completely forget that, like, you're not supposed to start knock-knock jokes the other way. 
and they just they just completely like their brain just explodes. I love it. Got him. Got him, chat. Got him. Yeah, thank you for that donation. Alright, so uh, we just stole that van. Uh, basically, you usually are supposed to like ram it until you do enough damage, but we can just park our police car at a certain distance, blow it up, and it does enough damage. And then our handy dandy taxi is here that we stored earlier on. So, you know, everything is officially going to plan. Because my taxi is here. That means we're that means we're, we're on good time. So, um, when you use something like Vigilante for an Insta Pass, Vigilante is now dead, which means I can't start it, so I need to use a different submission vehicle. Thankfully, taxis have the Taxi Driver submission. So what I can do is I can start the next Rampage with Taxi Driver. And basically, I have two minutes to complete this mission, um, and I'm going to make a replay in the meantime as well. These next two Insta Passes that I'm going to explain, um, they're a lot more complicated than the first one, and the, t the timing is a lot tighter, so I'm going to concentrate a little bit here. Um, but essentially, it's the same idea, so I'm going to complete this mission, and then get in time for the next mission. And um, the next one coming up is uh, not actually an Insta Pass, I tell a lie. It's a, it's a dupe and fail, but it's very similar but it's going to work slightly differently. So instead of starting something like Taxi Driver and then a story mission, I'm going to start a story mission and then start the same story mission again. It's the same setup, but just the same mission twice rather than two different missions. And the reason why that's going to be useful, um, as you'll see very soon, is the every single time you pass or fail a mission in this game, uh, there's something called Mission Cleanup that run. It's like a script that despawns all the assets to do with the mission. And that is going to be very useful for me, because if you start two instances of the same mission and then immediately fail it by killing yourself or getting busted or anything like that, then it's what it's going to do is it's going to despawn um, all of the mission-related assets. And this next mission upcoming, the mission pass, the mission will pass when you get rid of all the assets. So basically, you start the mission, you start the mission a second time, and then... Hold on, I'll just make sure I've pulled in here properly. There we go. So, start the mission. Start the mission a second time. And then kill yourself somehow. And then the first instance will fail, because obviously you've, you've died. And then that will despawn all of the assets for the second one as well. And then the second instance of the mission will pass. So we're just on time here. So we're starting taking out the laundry. And then as you can see, the rampage failed just in enough time for us to restart the mission again. And then we go over here, we do another Mega Jump, and we pass the mission, just like that. So, Mega Jumps you saw earlier, um, basically how they work is, there's two different ways of doing it. The one that I just did was you attack with left click, and then uh, you jump and play a replay at a specific timing. And for some odd reason, it just sets your momentum to like a ridiculously high number. I forget if it's like an underflow or an overflow or something, but yeah, like... The game just flings you in whatever direction you're, pl you're pressing so fast that it will kill you if you do it on flat ground, which you saw there. So it's great for death warping. So what you need to do is you need to do it either into a wall or off like a slope to slow down enough so you don't die. But yeah. So I need a taxi for this next setup. Uh, this is by far the hardest and most complicated one. So hopefully it goes well. Um, but basically the idea is that in order to insta-pass this next mission, uh, the one after this one, sorry, which is Salvatore's called a meeting, you need to start Taxi Driver and then start this mission. The problem is, is that, well, we do some more mega jumps here. Uh, this is also a very tight timing, so if I go quiet, you'll have to excuse me. Um, usually we'd use a commentator, but both my commentators bailed on me, so, you know, unlucky. But yeah, so you want to start Taxi Driver during Salvatore's called a meeting, but... If you do that, the game will just straight up crash. And you may wonder why, because it's like, oh, but you've been doing these coins to passes before, like, why does this one not work? Um, it's something to do with the models of the, of the mission not being loaded. So in order for it to work, we need to actually start the mission one time, and then fail it somehow, and then insta-pass it. So that's the reason why I got this fire truck. For some odd reason, if you start certain submissions during um, story missions, 
instead of insta-passing or crashing, which are the two outcomes that you've seen just now, it can also just kill the mission script entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a really kind of long setup through this, which allows me to complete this mission in the pickup, and then start fire truck, uh, firefighter submission, while on Salvatore's call the meeting. That will kill the mission script, but it loads in the models. And then I'm going to start Taxi Driver and then start Salvatore's Call to Meeting again. And it will insta-pass Salvatore's Call to Meeting. So that is very complicated and I'm very sorry. It's very difficult to explain it in an understandable way if you're not familiar with GTA mechanics and do it at the same time in such a small amount of time. But basically just check this. So I'll do it play by play. So I've just passed the pickup and then I'm going to enter the fire truck and then I'm going to hold the fire truck submission. Start Salvatore's call to meeting. Let go of my submission key, which as you can see starts Firefighter, and then it immediately kills the mission script. Then I can start Taxi Driver. Then the Rampage is going to end, which puts me back on Mission Zero. And then I'm starting Salvatore's call to meeting again. And if all goes well, bam. I've teleported to the next mission, and Salvatore's call to meeting insta-passed. And we're immediately on to the next mission, which is Chaperone. So I'm really glad that went well. That is... Arguably the hardest uh, strat, like individual strat in the run. So I'm glad I, uh, that went well. Because there, there was a, a, so many variables in that that I tried my best to explain really quick. But as you can imagine, with so many variables, there's so many things out of your control uh, that can screw you there. So thankfully, after that, uh, the rest of Portland, which is the first island, is fairly chilled. Um, the only things that we need to do is I'm going to use that fire truck again uh, for another dupe and fail. So I need to make sure that my fire truck doesn't despawn. And if the class remembers, the way you get your fire truck to not despawn is you make sure that you only enter two vehicles. Um, the fire truck being one, and then you can enter one more vehicle. So in this case, it's the limousine, right? But, slight problem. I'm going to need to use a taxi for the next mission. And if I enter the taxi... I will lose my fire truck, right? Because my last two vehicles that I've entered will be the limousine and the taxi. So, what I need to do is I need to despawn this limousine somehow. Thankfully, there's a weird mechanic in this game where if somebody is trying to throw you out of your car and you block the driver's side door, it will mark it for despawn. So, I'm going to use these guards right here. I'm going to block the driver's side door while I wait for uh, Maria to go and do her thing. I'm going to punch this guy. And I'm going to get in and block the driver's side door. So these guys are trying to throw me out of the car now because they're angry at me. And that is going to mark the limousine for despawn. So it's no longer in my personal vehicles list. So then when I enter the taxi on the next mission, my final two vehicles that I have will be the taxi and the fire truck. And my fire truck will still be there later on. Hopefully. If not, I can just get it again. But obviously, you know, ideally you want it all to work out, right? But there is a backup if things go wrong. So, uh, Maria goes to a party, it ends up being a bust, the, the cops come in, blah blah blah. Um, I guess while I'm driving back and give you a bit of lore update. So, as I said, uh, Claude starts working for the Mafia, and the head of the Mafia, Salvatore, um, his wife, Maria, um, starts to, you know, fancy us a little bit. And as we go through and start doing jobs for the Mafia, you'll notice um, that they don't quite like us as much as um, they give out. So the final mission in Portland, spoiler alert, if you haven't played this game, but I'm going to spoil it for you anyway. Um, the Mafia are going to betray us, and they're going to try and get us killed with a car bomb, and then we're going to escape with Maria to the next island, and then Staunton is going to be basically be getting revenge on the Mafia and working with the Yakuza instead. So we're going from, you know, very high-profile crime to other high-profile crime, as is the nature of GTA. So this next mission, Cutting the Grass, is actually really interesting. Because um, the reason I need a taxi is because usually, if you've played this mission casually, you'll know that you're supposed to tail a guy called Curly Bob. And the, the, as you can see, it even tells you, like, he's going to be leaving the club shortly, so go and tail him to the docks, right? But there's actually a fully intended secret way to complete this mission that is, that happens to be way faster than tailing because, you know, tailing missions are always very slow. If you ask any GTA speedrunner, 
what their like least favorite missions are, it will always be something to do with tailing. Like San Andreas, Snail Trail, um, there's one in GTA 4, I forget the name of the mission. They're always awful because they're slow and boring. But uh, we need to wait for Kelly Bob, Bob to leave. So we're going to make a replay. There is a grenades rampage just here. Uh, obviously we're on mission mode so we can't see it, but we can make a replay over it. And then we can just hop down here, wait for Curly Bob. And if we pull up in a taxi that isn't too damaged, he will actually get inside of our taxi instead. And you can tell that it's fully intended because the game tells you to take him to the harbor once he gets inside your taxi. So there's a quick little thing we can do here. If I double tap F1 when he starts moving like that, he'll run to us instead. And as you can see, he gets in our taxi and then it says take him to the Portland Harbor. So this is fully intended, which is really cool. Um, it's not very often, in, even in G like all GTAs, which are quite non-linear, um, that the developers leave in like secret ways to complete missions. But it just so happens to be way faster and you can skip the entire, uh, you know, s slow trailing segment. So we can just take him right there. And then it turns out he's a rat, so we need to kill him. He has a shotgun, uh, which can do a lot of damage to vehicles close range. Um, but hopefully I'll just run him over before he one-taps me. So yeah, we're gonna whack him, which uh, is cool terms for kill, in case you guys didn't know. Yeah, so that's mission passed. And then next up, we're gonna go to Tony's place for triads and tribulations. This is the next dupe and fail that I mentioned. So it works exactly the same as taking out the laundry. Um, the objective of the mission is to kill three triad, like, warlords or something. And the mission passes once they're all dead, or non-existent, right? So, the easiest way to do it is to just start the mission twice and then fail it somehow. Now, we don't have a rampage running, but it just so happens that this rampage that we have is a destroy vehicles rampage. And as you can see on the right-hand side from my rampage, every single time you start an end firefighter, you spawn and destroy a vehicle. So I can just destroy nine vehicles, start triads and tribulations, move out the way of the marker so I don't blow myself up. Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, pardon me. Excuse me. Hello. Move, please. Thank you. And then blow up the fire truck for the 10th vehicle. And then that puts me back on to free roam mode. And then I can start the mission again. So I'm on a dupe triads and tribulations now. And I can just death warp. Mission passed. Nice and easy. So yeah, that works exactly the same as what I mentioned before. Uh, locked ambulance, classic. That, that ambulance is locked 30% of the time. I would just like to mention that I am super famous because I got a Kotaku article written about me. Well, I say written about me, they just stole my Reddit comments. They didn't actually write anything. They just stole what I wrote on this speedrun Reddit and published it and made money off me. But yeah, anyway, uh, Kotaku wrote an article because I got eight locked ambulances in a row, which is one in 15,000, by the way. Just thought I'd let you know. I'm not still salty about it, I promise. But yeah, so the next mission is Blowfish. Um, we're going to do the same mega jumps as you saw before, but a slightly different route because we're going to be going to the compound instead. Whoops, I did not mean to launch myself over here, but that's all right. Um, but yeah, we need to be basically over in this direction and we can just mega jump ourselves over. I need to do the walk of shame back up the hill though. But yeah, there's a, there's a mega jump lineup that you can do that basically launches you all the way to the truck, which is nice. You wait for that pedestrian to move out the way, and then, bing, there we go. You can see Claude hits it so hard that you actually smash the, uh, <laughs> you actually smash the, the door, which is quite funny. So yeah, uh, this mission, you can't actually see it, because when we did the Salvatore's called a mission, uh, called a mission, called a meeting in Stapass, um, you can see on the right hand side there's a fair zero, and that's because like it's a leftover thing from Taxi Driver. Usually when you do this mission there is actually a damage counter, where because this is armed with a bomb that we need to go and plant, if you do too much damage you'll blow up and kill yourself and obviously fail the mission. We actually have no idea how much damage we've taken because of the fact that the text is overwritten by the fair zero thing. But uh, just know that if I crash too much I'm going to die. I say as I crash. You know, got to keep you on the edge of your seats. But yeah, this mission is super simple. You just got to go into the fish factory, which is like the triads, um, like base of operations, I guess. I don't know. Ex I don't know exactly what it is, but there's a lot of triads in there, and basically we just need to blow them all up. So we want to death warp again at the end of this mission. Um, so we want to take like a specific amount of damage from the explosion. Usually, you would arm the bomb and then run away because you don't want to take any damage, right? 
But if we stand right next to the explosion, it does exactly 82 and a half damage to us, which is perfect because that will put us on really low health so we can death warp really easily. So I'm gonna plant the bomb and then I'm just gonna stand point blank to the explosion to take as much damage as possible. And it should put me on about seven, seven or eight health. Yep, eight. And then we can just instantly set ourselves on fire and die. So usually dying in GTA would be quite detrimental because of the fact that we we lose all of our weapons when we die. But um, thankfully in early early game GTA 3, you don't need weapons for that much. So you can just death warp which spawns you back at the hospital um, to basically use it as a sort of kind of teleport all the way around the map. So this ambulance is hopefully going to stay um, outside of Salvatore's place, which is just up here, while we do the next mission. Again, there's a chance it might not, because I might mess up a few things, but if so, that's okay. This mission, we need to take $100,000 to 8-Ball's um, place to plant a bomb on a boat. So we have 181000 that's no problem. And then we'll get 150000 back when we complete the mission. So, as you, as you can imagine, like, GTA 3 is really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Really generous when it comes to the amount of money they give you. But don't be fooled, uh, because if you spend all of your money later on, you'll be really screwed. Because you need $500,000 um, to start the last mission, because you need to pay a ransom. Oops, I need to restart the mission. That was just a cutscene there, basically telling you to bring the 100k. I have 100k, so we just restart it immediately. But yeah, so it might seem like we have basically infinite money, but we really don't. Like, money is actually fairly tight in terms of what weapons we need to buy and stuff later on. Um, so money is quite a big factor in this. So this mission, there is a strat where you can... Um, you basically have to snipe a load of guys on a boat while 8-Ball goes and plants the bomb. You have to, like, basically defend him. Um, those of you who have watched my streams will know that I deliberately don't do the fast strat here because I'm very blind. My eyesight is horrible, and for, for that sole reason, not because I'm bad, but because I'm blind, um, this strat is stupidly difficult, so I'm gonna do the walk of shame up the stairs, and I'm gonna do the intended strats. So, the intended strats is to go up here. Usually you just like jump on top of your car and snipe them. So, if you ever get anyone asking in the chat room, like, oh, well, you just glitch everything, so it's no challenge. You just point them to the timestamp of this video. Because I'm not glitching right now, I'm doing the mission exactly as intended. I am not a cheater, I promise. So yeah, we just need to snipe all these guys. That guy ran right into my bullet, which is perfect. There's one here, there's one here. I think I got everyone. If not, 8-Ball will die, I'm very sorry, 8-Ball. If we are very fast, uh, we can actually make another replay here. If I don't make it, it's not a big deal. And it is quite tight timing, especially if you uh, do the kind of slow snipes like I do. It's just in this alleyway here. It's between these. Make the replay. I didn't, I, I made the replay, but I didn't manage to save it. So that's fine. Uh, in that case, we just need to death warp and grab the ambulance again. So yeah, because we, uh, we die, because we death warp since it's slightly faster, of course, the ambulance is locked again. 30%, by the way. Uh, we just need to keep um, killing ourselves over and over because all the vehicles despawn. So including our personal taxis, uh, sorry, ambulances, and the fixed ones. So you can get another try to see if it's open. So it's now open, which is nice. So uh, there is a backup if we don't make that replay. It's no big deal. Um, there is an AK-47 rampage just up here, and we can make that rampage instead because the ambulance uh, has the paramedic submission. So what I can do is I can hold the paramedic, start it, make the replay, and then quickly move out the way like that. And then we now have the replay of this rampage that you see there. So this is the final mission of Portland. This is what I was talking about before where everyone betrays you. Um, big spoiler alert. You need to start looking at the in-game clock um, at the top right. Uh, where it says 1941, etc. Uh, that's not the year, uh, or the year I was born. Don't worry, I'm a, I'm a young stallion, I promise. Everyone thinks I'm old because I've got a big beard and I look a bit old, but I'm not, I promise. But yeah, you need to start looking at the clock um, because the next mission after this is 
very important that you start it at a certain time of day. The way the mission works is it takes your current time of day, it rounds it up to the next hour, and then adds two and a half hours onto that. And then when those two and a half hours are up, that is when Salvatore will come out of his club and you can kill him. Spoilers, we're going to kill, kill Salvatore. So if you start the mission at, let's say, five minutes to the hour, like let's say I start at 2055, then it'll round it up to 21 or 9 o'clock. And then it will add two and a half hours, and then Salvatore will come out at 1130. If I start the mission five seconds later, it will round it all the way up to another hour, add two and a half hours, and then Salvatore won't come out until 1230. So that means that I would have to wait a whole extra minute just sit, sitting, twiddling my thumbs, waiting for the mission to progress. So yeah, it's super important um, that I start the mission at, you know, not on the hour, basically, because it's going to round all the way up. So this is fine. There is something that you can do called faking, uh, which I probably should have done thinking about it, but it's fine. It's hard to talk and play at the same time. Where you can, if you keep mashing replays just before the second, uh, keep, like, ticks on, you can reset the clock to the second. So you can basically manipulate the time of day however you want. Yeah, so all that we need to do is make sure that we start this mission at a reasonable time. This is a reasonable time. And also that we, um... We make sure that we do it before the rampage fails, because we want to be on mission zero for this. So, we're not going to dupe this mission or anything, but there is some, like, on mission zero or free roam mode, um, like, messing about we can do. So, we've got until 13 minutes past midnight. That's when Salvatore is going to come out. That's when we need to be at his club back in Portland. Um, but, obviously, we need... Because we've died a lot and we've been messing about, we don't have any weapons. And Salvatore... You know, we need some kind of method of killing him and his goons, right? Because he's heavily guarded, it's not just him. So we need a way to take out all these guys. And we also need a way to set up to dupe and fail the next mission. Now, as you know, rampages give you guns. So we can use a gun to kill these next guys, and also use a rampage to dupe and fail the next mission. Which is perfect, right? So, there is a rampage right here behind me. But, slight problem. This is an RPG rampage. RPGs are not very good at close quarters combat, which is what we're going to be doing when we go to fight Salvatore and his goons. Luckily, when you go to the ammunition, which is where you buy guns, like the gun store, even if you're on a rampage, you can buy a gun and it will overwrite your gun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the RPG rampage at a very specific time. It's going to be around 10 past the hour. And then I'm going to go and make a replay of another uh, location for the Rockets Rampage. Um, basically, every time you fail um, a Rampage, they have two different locations, and they alternate between that and the alternate location. So that was the first Rockets Rampage. And then I'm going to fail it deliberately, so the alternate location is right here. So I'm going to make a replay over that for later. Because we still have about an hour in game, which is about a minute real time, so we've got plenty of time. And then I'm going to go to the Ammunition. Because if I buy an, an Uzi, then what it will do is it will replace my weapon in my hand with the RPG. Um, it will replace the RPG with the Uzi, which is perfect. Because we can't sprint with the uh, rocket launcher. It's awful at close quarters combat. And we also can't jump with the rocket launcher. You can't do basically any kind of movement attack. So as you can see, if we buy a gun, now I have an Uzi. So I'm, t I'm still on a rocket's rampage, but I have an Uzi instead. So that's all good, working as intended. And the jumping part is specifically very important because of the fact that we're going to need to jump because we need, we're going to need to mega jump back to Staunton after this mission. So we park our car here and we wait for these dudes to come out. All of Salvatore's goons are going to come out here at exactly 30 minutes past the hour. So four, three, two, one. We're going to gun them all down with the Uzi. And then Salvatore is going to run out and try and get in to the back door. He happens to run right in our path and we can just run him over and instantly kill him. And now we have 26 seconds to go and start the next mission, which is all the way at Staunton, which may seem like an impossible task. But thankfully, mega jumps are extremely broken and we can just launch ourselves all the way back to Staunton. 
and then we can do another one here, all the way here, and then we're just in time to start the mission with around 8 seconds left. So this dupe and fail works exactly the same as before. You start the mission once, you start the mission a second time, the objective of the mission is to um, like kill a bunch of people, but all we're going to do is we're going to fail the mission instead by mega jumping, and the mission passes because the second instance sees that all the guys have despawned, because we failed the first instance, and then mission passed. So, if you're now thinking to yourself, God damn Ben, like, there's so much duping, there's so much glitching, like, you're barely even playing the game at this point. Don't worry, because that's it for the rest of the run. There are no more dupes, there are no more insta-passes, the rest is just basically as raw gameplay as you could possibly think. So the only other thing that we're going to do is a setup to try and get 30,000 rockets. Um, there's a chance it will fail, and it's out of my control. It's basically just frame-perfect mashing. Um, if it fails, then that's fine. There's a backup for it, and it loses about 15, 20 seconds. But ideally, we would like to, um, we would like to get 30,000 rockets and just blast our way through the rest of the game. So... We're on a rockets rampage right now, but we're in free roam mode, because I used the paramedic side mission to manipulate it. It's our only submission left besides firefighter, because we've killed all the rest of them. This mission is super easy with rockets. You've got to go and kill this guy? No problem. Just shoot two rockets, he's dead. It's like a three second mission. And then this mission is a very notorious one. Uh, if you've ever watched the top 10 hardest GTA missions on Watch Mojo on their YouTube channel, this is on there. This mission is stupidly difficult, apparently. It's uh, it's almost impossible to complete unless you already know uh, where to go and you already have like the fastest cars in the game. Well, I'm going to prove to you that they are not correct because you can do this with over a minute left on the timer. It is really not tight at all, even if you're a horrible driver and you're like legally blind like me. So, you know, watch Mojo if you're ever watching this. You know. I would recommend, I don't know, like, turning your monitor on if you ever do this mission again. So, the objective is that we have to answer all these different phones. Uh, but as you can see, we've still got our rockets rampage running in the background. And it's going to expire in around 15 seconds. If you end a rampage inside of a replay, you get to keep the ammo that it gives you, because we don't actually have infinite ammo here. We actually only have 30,000 rockets. So if I mash frame perfectly, I will get, as you can see in the top right, 29,998 rockets. So in Rampage in this game, it looks like you have infinite ammo, but you actually don't. They just give you 30,000, which is always like a ridiculously high number that you would never expend that many. But yeah, if you end it inside of a replay with mashing, then you get 30,000 rockets. And those 30,000 rockets are going to be quite useful, because you can imagine rockets are pretty overpowered in this game. You are definitely not intended to have that many of them. So the final replay that I'm going to make for the run just there is over a bribe star. The, that is like arguably the most broken replay that I'm going to make. And that's because when you pick up a police bribe in this game, um... It removes your wanted level, it like lowers it by one, right? So you can only pick up those once, and then it takes around like six minutes to respawn. So they're not super good natively. But if you pick them up inside of a replay, they're still there. So if you get like a five star wanted level, for example, and the, you know, the FBI are after you, and it's like, oh god, it's horrible, I'm, the police are after me, I'm gonna get destroyed. I can just press my replay key five times and remove all five of those stars and then the police don't care about me anymore. Whoops. So as you can see, I'm talking. I've got my hand off my keyboard right now or my right hand off my keyboard. Like I'm not trying at all and I still have over a minute and this is where the timing section ends. So watch Mojo, you guys are trolling. I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, even with crashing, even with not paying attention, this mission is insanely easy. I don't know where they made their list from. That, I don't know. So yeah. The final section here is just going to the park to meet Ray. 
Uh, he's an undercover... He's like an undercover corrupt cop, something like that. And uh, his missions are pretty interesting with 30k rockets, let's just say that. So this mission, Silence to Sneak, you've got to go and... Um, you're supposed to throw a grenade into a guy's window who's in witness protection and then chase him and kill him when he like comes out of the garage to escape. But 30,000, excuse me, 30,000 rockets make this uh, quite trivial. So <laughs> I'm just going to shoot a rocket through his window instead. And then as soon as he comes out, I'm just going to nuke him with rockets and we'll just instantly kill him. So goodbye. Mission passed. And that's going to be the trend for quite a few of these missions. Um, where the 30,000 rockets are just going to absolutely nuke everything and anything in my path. Come on. Here we go now. <laughs> 123 raiders from Gala. Thank you very much, Gala. And welcome, raiders. Came during the best run of the marathon, aren't you guys fortunate? Ben, do we have a moment for another animation? You do, Deck. Go nuts. Perfect. Perfect. So, we do have a donation from Laxus. He donated $25 and he sends you a less than three emoji. Oh, Thank make, you, make sure to send them a less than three back, Deck. Thank you very much. So, uh, this mission, Arm Shortage, um, if you get in a car, like I'm doing right now, uh, for some odd reason, I'm not exactly sure why, these guys spawn way quicker than they're intended to, which would usually be bad because you're not, you know, you're not prepared for them. But I am prepared for them because I have 30,000 rockets. So, nuke all these guys. We can do a quick little stylish mega jump to be in time for these, and then bang, they're all dead. Grab the armor for safety, and go to fill. Mission passed. So... Usually here, if you didn't have the 30,000 rockets, you can buy rockets for $25,000 each. Uh, you get $25,000 for five rockets, and you need about 10 uh, for the rest of the run. So as you can imagine, we were talking about money earlier. If you're spending like 50 grand on weapons, then the 500k um, becomes way tighter than you think it is. Because if you buy, let's say, four pairs of rockets, you won't have enough m money to start the final mission. So, it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, I did accidentally once, actually I've done it twice now. I bought rockets, so I had 30,005. And uh, everyone laughed at me for like a solid week. Because, you know, y y you can never have too many rockets, I guess. So, I'm gonna look out for a fast car, because my car's kind of busted. This Banshee is perfect, it's pretty much ideal. Because this next mission, I want to be crashing into another car a lot, and I don't want to blow up my car prematurely. This mission also happens to be- that was a prostitute, by the way, trying to get into my car. No thank you, I've got things to do. I'm, I've got some games to play. I don't need to, you know, participate in such uh, vulgar business with you, lady. I've got things to do. I've got people to murder. Prostitution? Disgusting. Yeah, this next mission is, um, like, probably the most horrible mission in terms of, like, luck required for it to go well. You need to bump into this bobcat that's driving around six times uh, in order to get evidence. Place it in your car and then blow up the car and ditch the evidence. But the issue is, is that uh, this is actually really good. This is like Simpsons Hit and Run tier where you can just ram them over and over again. But... As you can see, uh, the bobcat, uh, oh, <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, the bobcat can teleport around if it gets stuck. It can go into the ocean and fail the mission. And it can drive pretty much wherever. So we want it to go south because our next mission is in the south. But there is a chance that it will just drive north. So if it turns right here, okay, good, it didn't. If it turns right there, it drives all the way to the opposite side of the map, which is huge time loss. Because obviously we have to drive all the way back again, which is really annoying. And as you can see, they drive like a complete maniac. So sometimes it's really difficult to um, like judge where they're going to go. But that was decent. 
So now we need to leave the evidence in the car and get rid of the car. So I'm going to look for another fast vehicle to switch to. Um, hopefully I will find one on the way to our next target, which is Donald Love just down here. Sentinel is okay. I could have taken the cop car as well, but I thought I'd get something a bit better. If not, we'll just start the next mission and see what we get. Moonbeam, not good. That was an Infernus, but obviously Infernus going the wrong way. Not very useful to me. That's fine. We'll just see what we get for the next mission. So, uh, there's a bit more luck required here in this mission. Ah, yes. The flatbed. Just what I always wanted. A nice, fast car. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, so there's a bit of luck required for this next mission. Um, we need to get a cartel cruiser, which is like the Colombian cartel's gang car. So, there is a fixed spawn, so you don't have to rely on traffic, but there's a random chance that it can be locked. So, you have two choices. You can try and get one on the road, which is random, or you can try and do the fixed spawn, which is random, whether it's locked or not. So, yeah, you don't have too much of a choice. Um, I'm gonna go for the traffic spawn because it's random, but it's faster if it goes right. So, you know, may as well go for the faster random thing, right? So, there's a bit of camera manipulation you can do to try and spawn in as many vehicles as possible in the area where they spawn. So I'm gonna move my camera here when I get into Fort Staunton. And that is going to spawn a Castle Cruiser. Give me this. Don't despawn, please. Come back. I need you. Come back. Stop shooting at me. There's another one. I'll take this one. Oh, no, don't blow up. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, uh, panic. Okay, there's another one. Oh, my God. I've never seen so many Castle Cruisers in my life. Yoink. All the world record holders who get unlucky and lose runs to this, I'm so sorry. But also, I'm not. I'm better than you, so. Way. I have never seen three cartel crews spawn like that in a row. That was insanely lucky. But yes, uh, we can go in to this compound, and if we play a replay at a certain time, we can just kill these guys AI. So as you can see, they just they start running, and then they just stop, and it's like we're not even there. So as you can see, they don't attack us at all. So this guy that we have to rescue can be in three potential garages. Can be in that one, can be in this one, and of course, he's in the... Um, the worst one, which is like the unluckiest one because it's the furthest away. Here he is. But we got him. So now, when I was talking about how lucky I got with the car, now I can talk about how unlucky I got because I got third garage, which is the unluckiest one. So in reality, I'm actually really unlucky, guys. Trust me. And it's very important that we keep this car. Because for the next mission, we also need a uh, cartel cruiser. So, very important that we don't flip this car or lose it or blow it up or something. Which I actually did yesterday in practice. For the first time ever, I flipped this car. And I, uh, I had to ask in the GTA 3 help channel, uh, like, if I actually still needed the cartel cruiser, even though I'd already started the mission. Turns out, you do. So, uh, let's not flip, because that would be embarrassing. Also, I hope you're in, you're enjoying the music. I usually wouldn't play it because obviously usually GTA radio is massively DMCA, but GTA 3 is actually mostly fine for copyright because of the fact that it's not like, you know, they didn't get major label um, bands to record music. So a lot of it is quite like underground unknown stuff. So you can blast it out as much as you want and not really worry about DMCA. So you're welcome. Classical FM? I don't listen to that anyway, who cares? Flashback? I don't listen to that anyway, who cares? I only listen to MSX FM because I'm, you know... I'm, I'm really cool. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm a gangster, but it's like not really gangster radio, is it? Listening to, like, <laughs> un underground, uh, like, drum and bass. Yeah, Gangster is more Game FM. Let's whack on Game FM for the gangsters in the chat room. There we go. Yeah, West Side, homies. Am I right? Yeah, so this mission, we actually need to kill Kenji, who is the head of the Yakuza. Um, if we go up there, uh, there's a bunch of guys that attack us. 
And if we kill him without a cartel cruiser, um, we'll actually fail the mission. We're just going to shoot him through the floor instead, which is much easier. So then we don't have to worry about getting spotted. I actually also didn't kill him. Whereabouts is he? Die, Kenji. There we go. You'll know if he's dead because it'll tell you he's fending me at the bottom. There we go. Um, but yeah, the reason why you need the gang car is because Donald Love is trying to get uh, a gang war to happen. So, as you can imagine, if the cartel cruiser comes up and assassinates the head of the Yakuza, then the Yakuza is going to try and, you know, fight back against the Colombian cartel. So, that's why it's like heavily stressed that we need to use a gang car and not be spotted. Because we need them to think that it was the Colombian cartel who killed Kenji. When in reality it was us. Don't tell anyone guys, but it was me. So we can dump the car whenever and the mission will pass. Obviously may as well dump it when we get back. There's no point in walking back to the mission. So the police are very angry at us. The second we get out of the car, they don't care anymore. So this next mission is the only auto scroller in the game. Auto-scroller basically just means it's on a timer, and there's no real way to speed it up. Technically, there is a way to speed it up, but it's like only done in world record attempts, so I'm not going to do it, because I deserve a break. You know, my, my voice is a little, I need a bit of water. Uh, but there is a couple of things that we can do in the meantime while we're waiting. Um, basically, a plane is going gonna, is gonna to drop a lot of packages, and the police are going to pick them up. But we need to pick them up before the police do. That's all, that's all the... Uh, that's all the mission is, basically. So, I'm gonna head to ammunition. I'm gonna grab a uh, mini Uzi, which will be useful later on uh, as a potential backup. And then you can also heal and look for a fast car. So, there's a fixed Banshee down here, which I'm gonna get. You can also get an Infernus or a Cheetah, which are technically faster, but I will, I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention, because I, I could have driven past like 10 of them, and I have no idea. And then we'll, uh, we'll knock the door off. As you've noticed, I've been knocking the door off pretty much every single car I've been using. Um, the simple reason for that is because it skips the uh, opening animation. I can hear what appears to be my mother coming through the door. Hello, mother. How's it going? I'm currently doing my run for Speed Souls Charity Marathon. That's no problem. I'm sure everyone would like to say hi to you. Hello to you too, mother. You're talking to about 2,000 people on Twitch's front page. I don't know if you can hear her, but she says hi. I was thinking about how we could use this time, but it's perfect that you can use my time talking to my mum. How cute is that? But yeah, so the, um, the plane is here dropping the packages. The police boat is miles away. So we can just get them all as they, uh, all as they turn up and we are perfectly on time. As you can see, every single time we pick up a package, we're getting a higher wanted level. This is where the wanted uh, bribe replay comes in. So as you can see here, we're going to end up with five stars. And we'd usually have to drive back with five stars, which is really bad because the FBI and the police are onto us. And, you know, they want to kill us and they can flip our car. They can shoot us. They can, you know, do all sorts of stuff. But as you can see, if I just play my bribe replay, I can just get rid of all my wanted stars just like that in like a second. So no problem. Yes. Thank you. You know, if anyone else uh, should was... we go on, what's up? Should we read another donation? Yeah, you well... can do. Okay, perfect. So we have a twelve dollar donation from Bufu Two K saying, "Let's go, Ben. Good luck with the run." Thank you, Bufu. Yeah, so I was about to say, if anyone else dared to interrupt my SEM run, I would be very upset. But since it's my mummy, I will make an exception. Yeah, 
So these next missions coming up are where we're going to unlock Shoreside Vale. Shoreside Vale is um, is the the final island, and it's the last couple of missions of the game. And uh, oh boy, let me tell you, um, I would argue that these next few missions, this like final segment going to Shoreside Vale, is one of the hardest segments uh, in GTA. Full stop. Because there's going to be a lot of flying what is the Dodo. And if you haven't played GTA 3 or you're maybe not familiar with the Dodo, basically just know that it's a plane that is implemented into the game, but it's not intended to be flown. But you can technically fly it, the controls are just very broken. So, usually in GTA, if you were to, um, let's say for example you want to um, like fly a plane, you would hold W, which is forward, and then you would hold your lean back key, which would then, um, hold on, I'm just gonna make sure I make the bridge cycle here. Okay, good. You would hold your lean back key to pull up, right? The same way you would pull like the little joystick in a plane. I don't know what that's called. Any pilots in the chat can tell me what that's called. But you would pull up in order to gain altitude, right? But with the Dodo, it's the complete opposite. You hold your down key to gain speed, and then you let go of it in order to go up. And then it's all about like the momentum. You have to tap down in a certain uh, in a certain rhythm in order to maintain your height. Otherwise, you just flop. So yeah, it's very difficult to control, but we'll get more into that in a second. It's very important I run over that guy because he has an M16. M16s are very overpowered in this game. And then we just murk these next few guys. So that's why I got the Uzi during a drop in the ocean, just in case I need to drive by these guys. This is the Dodo. As you can see, the uh, the wings are very short. Um, they've been clipped, so to speak. So, a ton of these missions require going from like island to island. And as you can imagine, flying a plane over there is way faster than driving over the bridge. So, I'm gonna hold my down key here and hold W to gain, gain uh, altitude. And then I'm gonna let go of everything. And as you can see, I actually am able to fly this thing. And then if I tap down in a very regular rhythm, I can keep my speed. The more I tap like this, the more speed I gain. The less I tap, the less, you know, the less speed I have. So, it is super important to slow down when you're going to do landings, because obviously if you crash land, you're just going to blow up and die. Um, so it's very important that you slow down just enough, and then land this thing nice and clean, because it's very bouncy as well. Ooh, you can see there, even with a decent landing, that was a huge bounce. And oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Classic Dodo. Yeah, so I landed a bit too hard there, and as you can see, it just went completely mental. But that's alright, we're still in one piece, gamers. We're still good. Copium. It's, it's fine, guys. We're good. Alright, we out here. So, in this segment, you would usually have to go around and fight a load of guys. But uh, we can just mega jump across here, and we land right in the final section. Everyone's going to start shooting at me, but if we run quick enough, we can go here and trigger the next segment. Easy. And now they're all dead. So we're going to fly back to Donald's place and take the package there, and then we're going to fly back. And then we're going to do some more Dodo antics. We're going to do what's called Dodo Bait. The next mission, you have to... Um, you have to lure three cars into a Yakuza trap, and then let the Yakuza kill them. Sounds simple enough, but we're gonna do it all with the Dodo. So, there's no height cap on, like, how to trigger them. So we can go really high in the air with the Dodo, and fly all the way around the map triggering all the guys. And then we can land inside the compound with the Dodo, which is, as you can imagine, extremely risky and difficult. Um, but, you know, I'm going to try my best to do it. And the worst part about Dodo Bait is that even if you execute everything perfectly, then there's a chance that the AI cannot properly kill the guys, and you fail anyway. Mother, I can see you staring at me. What's up? Yes, I am busy. I do apologize. Okay. I'll see you later, mother. Great to see you. Love you. Everyone say goodbye to my mother, otherwise you're getting banned. 
Oops. Tried to do a takeoff there while talking to Mother. Not so good. That's fine. We can, we can just taxi it back. But yeah, so as I was saying, uh, Dodo...
Oh, I miss. I'm. Oh, I know. I got the window. I got it with the tail. That was intended. Yep. I. Yeah. I know what I'm doing, guys. I promise. But yeah, this is the Banshee. It's one of the fastest cars in the game. Very nice. And we can use this. Um, so there are several ways to destroy uh, the stalls. The first one is that you can ram into them with your car. But you're gonna be careful because if you do it a lot, then it will it will do a lot of damage to your car and you'll blow yourself up. So we only do it for the first two. The second way is that you can use some kind of explosion. So for example, you can throw a grenade at it or you can shoot it with a rocket. Now, for some reason, no idea why, maybe someone can explain in the chat some, some GTA 3 extraordinaire. If you throw a grenade at it, the grenade has to actually collide with the stall and then blow up to do enough damage to destroy it. If the, if the grenade just blows up near it, it won't destroy it for some reason. But if you use rockets, then it kind of does two birds with one stone. Because the rocket collides with the stall and then immediately blows up. So you insta-kill the stalls with the rockets. And, you know, thankfully for us, we have quite a lot of rockets in our back pocket. Rhyme not intended, I, I, I assure you. I'm a poet and I did not even know it. So we've done the two stalls in Portland. Uh, there are two in Portland, two in Shoreside, and five in Staunton. So right now we're in Staunton and we're going to do these last uh, five. And then we're going to head to Shoreside and do the last two there. So for these ones, we're just going to use our handy dandy rocket launcher and just blow them all up. So everything else is pretty solid. Uh, Deck, if you've got any donations to read, or if you just want to tell me about how your day is going, feel free to pipe in. I do, in fact, have a donation to read for you Perfect. and for all of you guys. So we have an $11 donation from Maz saying, Burb? Question mark? Thank you, Maz. Burb exclamation mark. <laughs> Can we get, we get a chat going? My is going right. Yeah, Thank get a chat going. I want to see a lot of... Uh, wh wh what Burb emotes do we have? Can we get some kind of Burb chant? Mods? Mod check? Burb thinking, that'll do. Get me a chat, chant of Burb thinking right now. Otherwise, I'll burb scream. Burb sip is superior, though. All Burb sip, that'll do. As long as there is a Burb filling my, my chat room right now, then I'll be happy. Thank you. If any of you don't participate in the chant, you're getting banned, by the way. I should stop saying that, because people are like, I'm actually gonna get, I just, I just threatened to ban everyone during my runs. It's like, you guys are actually really nice, and I really appreciate you being here. But also, if you don't do this really petty thing, I'm going to ban you. I will show you a, a nifty little thing here as well, which is a recent discovery. I could make this bridge cycle, but when the bridge goes up, uh, as you'll see in a second, you would usually not be able to get across, but someone recently found that if you mash replays... fast enough, you can actually go all the way over the bridge uh, without the without it being there. There's a nice little strat for you. I think uh, Anti failed that in his uh, GTA 3 in his, uh, his GTA 3 Hundo run at GDQ, so I'm officially better than Anti, as I say I say as I go the wrong way. Yeah, there you go. I'm a, I'm a god gamer, guys, trust me. So, the next stall in Shoreside and the penultimate stall is right there. And the next one just happens to be right next to the airport. Um, so we can do... Uh, where on earth am I? Oh, I'm here. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I'm a god gamer, by the way, guys. Completely forget where I am. <laughs> we're good. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, and then we can immediately grab the dodo after completing this mission. And then fly back to the construction site again. So it all works out quite nicely. So this is the final stall coming up here. We've still got four minutes left, plenty of time. No rush. Oops. I was looking at my, I was looking at the timer. And I just look away and immediately crash. I need to stop putting my foot in my mouth. Yeah, last guy, easy, dead, mission passed. Two more missions to go. The next one is sort of an auto-scroller, but it also isn't. Um, there was actually a Japanese tool-assisted speedrun done years and years ago. Um, 
Basically, this mission is that a... Also, don't worry about that Banshee. If you're wondering why it's there, it's because it's from a practice save. Don't worry about that. But yeah, the, the way this next mission works is a, a plane comes in. It's actually a Dodo. A Dodo comes in um, and it pulls into the airport right as the timer finishes. I think the timer is like three and a half minutes. And um, from there, you have to blow it up, grab all the packages, and get it back to the construction site. Sounds simple enough, right? But, as we found, well, I say we found, the Japanese TASA found, that you can actually blow it up like a minute and a half early at the dam with a really specific liner. And uh, we actually incorporated that into, you know, real-time RTA runs. So I'll be showing that off for you now. So, it's really important that you get the timing right, because if you do it too early, then you'll shoot them over, you'll shoot the packages like over the other side of the ledge at the dam. And then if you shoot too late, then you'll shoot them actually into the dam itself, and you have to go all the way around and pick them up, which is like the walk of shame. So, it's very easy to do that. I'll try my best not to. So yeah, three and a half minutes. We're gonna go to the dam. We're supposed to go to the airport, but uh, we're not gonna go there. We're gonna go to the opposite side of the map. Also, if you saw me mashing replays when I was flying there, that was to do what's called weather skip. Basically, weather works on a fixed cycle in this game. Uh, every hour in game or every minute real time, there is a new cycle. So it could be like a minute of rain, then another minute of rain, then a minute of clear skies, then a minute of fog, etc, etc. And um, what you can do is when it goes to 59 minutes past the hour, you can spam replays and every single replay that you start and finish, it skips an hour of, of like weather. It skips onto the next cycle. So as you saw, it was raining and it was really foggy, and I didn't want it to be raining and foggy and horrible for this next flight. So I skipped two minutes of weather, which put me onto clear skies again. That guy hit me. Did you see that? That guy shot me. Those guys are shooting me. Oh my god. Alright, uh, this is fine. D don't, don't worry, guys. I'm a professional. I'm gonna get rid of... <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that dodo anymore. I want a car. Uh, hmm. Let's not panic. I need to get to the do uh, the dam and be in position. Whew. Okay, let me concentrate for a second. I am not panicking. You're panicking. I think I'm good. I'll just have to drive back. Actually, I can go and drive and get the dodo from the airport. That'd be fine. But I really want to show this off. Yeah, I've got plenty of time. Alright, we're good, guys. Don't worry about it. I wasn't panicking. So we pull up here, and we're gonna park our car in a nice, uh, nice convenient location. And then we're gonna stand uh, around here. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna go look at this railing. We're gonna hold W to aim all the way up. And then at around 117 on the clock, as soon as the dodo comes into view, like as soon as it shows it in the bottom left, then we're gonna shoot it. And if all goes well and I time it well, um, then hopefully we'll shoot it down and we'll be able to collect all the packages about a minute early. Nice. Get rid of the wanted level. And hopefully they should all fall before me. Oh god, don't want to blow myself up. Okay, perfect. We have all the packages. There's one on the ledge, which is like less than ideal because I have to get out to get it, but that's fine. So, here are all the packages. Now we can just drive back, uh, go and get the dodo from the airport. So yeah, I I'm glad that went well. So when we go back, uh, this one is going to be the hardest flight as I mentioned. I might as well start talking about it now so I can kind of concentrate when I get to it. The final mission, uh, you finally uh, find Catalina and she escapes in a helicopter. You have to get to a roof and blow her up, but you usually would have to fly all the way through the dam that we just went to. Um, in order to get to her and blow her up with a rocket launcher. Now, you can use the dodo to fly over all those guys, but if you just fly straight to the roof, nothing will happen because there are certain triggers in the dam that you need to hit and a cutscene needs to play in order for Catalina to spawn and for you to be able to kill her properly. So, what you need to do is you need to fly fast enough so that you don't die but slow enough and low enough to where you hit the triggers in the right order 
for the mission to continue as normal. That doesn't sound that difficult, but let me tell you, it that 10 second flight is the most precise flight you will ever see. And then you've got to land on the roof while going stupidly fast and not fall off. And yeah, it just becomes a whole ordeal. So I'm gonna try my best. If I do fail it, it's fine. There are cool backups that we can show. Actually, the cutscene isn't required. <laughs> Did not ask, pardon it. This is my stream, not yours. I'm gonna do another weather skip to get rid of the fog because fog is bad and it means that I can't see. Yeah, what a nerd. Go and touch some grass like I did earlier on bait, haha. <laughs> yeah, final mission coming up. So we need $500,000 to start it. I have $500,000. I have quite a lot of money, so don't worry about it. So I'm gonna basically just crash land at Catalina's place because it's the fastest. Um, there's no need to do like a proper landing because it's all the way up on a hill. So by the time I get enough height, I'll just have enough height to get there anyway. So I don't really need to properly land. I can just throw myself at the hill and I'll be good. It's just up here on this hill. And then, as I mentioned, if all goes well, the plan is, is that we're going to take off, as soon as Catalina starts escaping, we're going to take off with the dodo, and then we're going to fly nice and low, trigger all the guys, land on the roof, blow her up, uh, not die while all the guys are shooting me, and then rescue Maria, who is like on the roof as well. And I'm going to try hard for a little bit in order to hopefully do it, because this is very difficult. It is like slept on how difficult this is. It looks easy, but it's not. Like, slightly too fast or slightly too high and you're dead. Oh great, that's fantastic. Just what I needed. Yeah, I don't have nearly enough speed here. Yeah, because of that banshee screwing me. That's fine. I can show you a backup. That's unfortunate because I failed it every single marathon so far, but that one wasn't my fault. Like, that banshee just pulled right in front of me and screwed me. But yeah, I can show you a cool backup. It's a shame that I always have to show this in marathons, but at least I can have, you know, at least I can say with confidence that this wasn't my fault this time, whereas all the other times I've just messed it up. That time I didn't even get a chance to show you. So yeah, I can show you a nifty little uh, backup to this. So instead of flying over there with a the dodo, instead we're going to go up here, and we can mega jump all the way to the roof. So we can just stand here, look here, and just launch ourselves over. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, we can't actually blow up this helicopter because we, ha we haven't started the cutscene. But that's not entirely true. We can. If we make a replay of the helicopter, and then shoot and play the replay just as the rocket collides, we can blow it up inside of the cutscene, and then go to Maria and that's going to be time. So time's coming up in a second. That's time there. The issue with this strat is that it will likely crash the game in the final segments. So there is a good chance the game will crash, and that's why it's called the crash change. But yeah. Ooh. Very unfortunate that I didn't get to show the faster version of the exchange, but that's just the way it is in marathons sometimes. Sometimes you're, you know, sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. But that was a 118.10 on my end. That's not too bad. Could have gone a lot worse. So yeah, because we are behind on schedule, I won't take up too much of your time. Just know that if you enjoyed this run, um, there's a whole community, thousands of us who will play GTA and watch GTA and root GTA and find glitches and whatnot. Um, yeah, if you go to uh, speedon.com forward slash GTA, you can find like all of the relevant links. You can find the community Discord. Um, and obviously you can find my Twitter and Twitch, YouTube, whatever, if you're interested in more GTA speedruns. There is always uh, more GTA content to consume. Next up, we've got my personal favorite run in the marathon, besides mine, of course. Uh, Kata is going to be doing Dark Souls Remastered All Achievements, which is awesome. If you haven't seen an All Achievements speedrun of Dark Souls, I would definitely recommend sticking around, because it's my favorite category, and that's all the reason you need. 
So yeah, um, if we're good to go to transition onto Kata, then I will love you and leave you. Thank you all for watching. Mwah. Thank you, Ben. Very cool. Amazing run.